さんこんにちは、えーえー、スケダリティ第2話目は、えー、アメリカサンフランシスコに来てみました、えー、このゼップゼンガーの海の親でもありレジェンドスケーターでもあります、えー、トミゲレロさん、えー、皆さん音楽でよくご存知だと思いますがトミゲレロさんに、えー、スケートボードと音楽の関係についてお話を伺いたくてやってまいりましたそれじゃちょっとですね、えーズップ宣言あちこっち行ってみましょうそれではナビ G is the man I have a lot of respect for what he did for on the skateboard but like on the top of that like I got to know him as a friend now and I can call him as a friend that's, that's such an honorデラックスはスケートボードの世界で一番でかいディストリビューション会社でトミーまで今やっててまあちょっとトミーに新しい板組んでもらえたらいいかなと<笑> Hello トミー What the hell you want? I'm working Let's go do that Fan? Fans, not the AC now? Yeah, I don't know if maybe the AC's broken or something. The warehouse. All the products you ever wanted or didn't need. This is kind of just random stuff. Some、uh, t shirts, venture, skateboards. Have you heard of them? <laughs> Stickers. It's a real section. Nice gold. Comes with a coaster, Cardi Ale. <laughs> These are really good. This is, new, this is a new formula.、Oh. Killing. What's the difference between the wheels and wheels? Different durometers,、uh, sizes. A lot of it's shape, you know? I mean, people get real specific. I like narrow wheels, thin, thin wheels. Oh, nice. This just came in. Is that a new one? Yep. Is that crooked? Yep. Is that what you made? I didn't do this one. It was done by Amanda. I've been a lot more hands off. I just direct. Tommy's actually pretty easy to work with.、Um, he's probably easier than any of my other bosses. He knows what he wants. He's able to make decisions really easily. He knows when he doesn't like something, and he can articulate that to me really well. So, what ends up happening is that our work gets done fast and easy. I take Mark's art and I clean it up and we color it,、um, and then Tommy okays everything after that. What's the direction of the picket? Fun. A lot of times it can be something funny, you know,、mm -hmm. which I like. I like to keep crooked light and keep it funny and just fun, you know, because that's what's rad about crooked. We can、mm -hmm. be goofy as we want and no one gives a shit. This is all real stuff. This is a real section over here. Real. So, Real is a company you started, no? Yeah, I was one of the founders. Yeah, Anti Hero is one of my favorites. Really sarcastic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at that shit. Oh. Oh. How sweet is that? The best color ever. It is the best color ever. Oh, check this oh. out. Zip zinger. Ooh, what, what? Nice. Tell me, what's a zip zinger mean? Zipping and zinging. When the first time you built your skateboard? Right now. No, when was the first time? 78. 78. Probably. A year later after I started skating, you know?、Mm -hmm. I was trying to upgrade my boards, selling、mm. art, selling shit to get new shit. I was entering contests since 77. I had trophies from 77 for everything freestyle, long jump, barrel jump, downhill, slalom, bowl riding. Yeah, everything. I turned pro in 85 and my board came out in 86. Tommy Burrell is like the ultimate skater. He was like the first to do it. You know, I mean, like one of the first people that I've seen from San Francisco that would really do it. He basically made free skating look really like、uh, live, you know what I mean?、Like, He brought the different styles to skateboard, and everyone else was like robot, kind of stiff, didn't have a, it wasn't, he came with a, with a street flavor, with a street style that was like unmatched. 
1984. Stacy seen me skating Joe Lopes ramp, and he liked the way I skated. The next day was a contest in Golden Gate Park, one of the first street style contests. It was actually the second street style contest. And he told my brother he, he wanted me to ride for Powell mm -hmm. at the mm -hmm. end of the day. And I didn't believe my brother. I thought he was lying to me. <laughs> wow, brand new singer. See, this is for you, Rip. See, <laughs> just for you, buddy. How are you open go skate nowadays? Well, my back says it's okay. Last time I skated tranny was in Japan with you at the park. You know, was, a month ago. That was such a sesh. So not, not that long ago, I mean, as far as transition. Yeah. No, but I've been, I can push around. All right, she's ready to go. Nice. Go. Shred it up, shreddy. <laughs> grandmother and my grandfather from somewhere in the 50s. My grandfather died before I was born, so I never met him. And he was a jazz guitar player and a violinist. Now I'm going to make a record all on four track, no computer involved. Mm. Just all old school four track drum machines. Four tracks, that's it. It's fun, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that. Is it something like for uh, adventure for you to go to the new stage or that's kind of thing that you go back to the original it's, it's kind of both yeah. you know because that's how i first started when i first my first powell check that i got when i was 19 i think i bought a four track and a drum machine and i already had a guitar and bass yeah. so i've been doing that since i was for the last oh, i don't know 27 years mm. you know messing around with four tracks but then you know Progress moved on, you know, on to 8-track digital recorders and stuff like that. And then now, finally, obviously, computers and Pro Tools and, and everything, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. But I hate sitting in front of a monitor, sitting in front of a computer all the time, and you're like, this is not music, you know? This is not music. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> all right. This is what I was talking about. So this is the 4-track I just got. Old school. Old school. Cassette tape. And then, you know, all the, these random instruments. This uh, room's gonna be the... your... Yeah. <laughs> my dub lab. Yeah, it's gonna your be... Cave. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be my music cave for a little bit. <laughs> when I get time to fucking do it, you know? <laughs> 80年代にまあ彼がストリートっていうスタイルを確立したことによってパフォーマンス的だったり人に見せるため的なもんだったものが誰もがどこもが自分のスケートボードの楽しめる場所っていうふうに思ってたのがまあトニーだったんですよねス
。喋れないよ。You did amazing. <笑>トミーありがとう。アメリカはいいところ、いいことすると、みんながちゃんと評価してくれるところだね。日本だったらよかったよって話だけなんだけど、アメリカはこれだから。<笑>ママ、これ全部ママに行くからね。<笑>ありがとう、みんな。それじゃあね。Oh, it's fun. I, mean, I always play with musicians who are better than me. And, and that's how you learn and grow and expand. I wish I had more opportunity to do that. I don't have a band, so I just get people together and we just have to see what happens. And we you know, keep it simple in a way where there's, we're not, they're not necessarily songs, they're just grooves and kind of、um, improvising on a theme or idea. And, and you, you, know, you, you expand on that idea by. Either dynamically or, or, or melodically.、Um, and then everybody has their moment to kind of just freak out as well.、Right. Solo. How you doing? Doing great. How you doing? All right. You guys gonna come by? Always with the TV. What you got? Is that、Camera. tape? <laughs> no, it's,、uh, paper it's a towel. New recording medium. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I went in there, looked at it. It's huge. People aren't putting out CDs anymore. New chairs, huh? Nice. It's a new chair. Those are nice. So, this, this whole wall is stuff that Monty's recorded here or mixed here. And the earliest stuff of mine is Soul Food Taqueria, which was mixed here in some recording. And then、um, down the line, let's see, we recorded some of this here, but mixed all here.、We、recorded a bunch of this here and mixed here. How do you describe、um, his music? Groovy. <laughs> I don't know what else to call it. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> a lot of people come in here not knowing what they're doing at all, not having any, anything prepared. Tommy always comes in with the record pretty much done, you know, pretty much set up all the songs, and, and we just make it bigger and sound better. It's just it's music for the moment. You know, just see what happens. That's all. It's not preconceived and it will never be duplicated like that again.、So、it's just of the moment. I don't plan very well. I'm not much of a planner. Some days you wake up, you go,、oh, I want to play music. I got these ideas, but then you're like, shit, I can't because I got to go do these other things. And that always sucks and it happens all the time. What would be your dream life like? My dream life? Just the whole time. Just. Just, yep, just wake up, take a, have a lazy morning like I like to have, and get my brain together, my thoughts together, and then go into the studio and record. And I'd love to have some sort of something to skate, you know? If you want to become a better musician, you gotta play. You gotta play all the time, and I don't, and I don't have the time to do that. So it would be great just to have the time to play music. That's what I would love to do. Because, you know, I mean, that's all I did with skating. Skated 24 7, and that's how you become good. Have to do it all the time. But I'm, I'm thankful that I have the opportunity to play. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, let's go. This is my rehearsal studio、yeah. that I share with Damon Way. I have a little rehearsal space here. It's called Secret Studios. Let's go check it out. Secret. Secret. Right at the entrance, huh? Yep. So I, I got a, we have a corner room, which is great. So you only, only share one wall. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Which is amazing. So, this is all Damon stuff, amazingly organized, super high end synths and drum machines.、Yeah. Check these out, these maracas. Claudine、yeah. made these for my birthday. Great thing about this, we can make noise 24 7.、Mm. As much noise as you fucking want. You ever stayed overnight here? No, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not that kind of person though. I don't operate yeah, that way, yeah, you know, because、yeah, yeah. it's difficult to keep that creative juice flowing like, right, right. for a real expanded period of time.、Mm -hmm. I'm definitely not that person. Which is the instrument you're, you're into now? Well,、mm, I think、yeah. it, it shifts differently, you know. like... You play acoustic something? Eh, not, I, I used to a lot more, but not really. I haven't been, so it, they're a lot harder to play because of the. the We chose this life and we made it happen. You know?
being a skater is, a, is like a blessing and a curse at the same time because we're super fortunate for being chosen to be skaters, but at the same time we're fucked because we can't exist in society in a normal way. You know, we, we can't go get nine to five jobs. You know, I, I've seen a lot of people struggle with it. It's real hard. I, I couldn't do it. You know, so you find a way and you make a way. You make your own fucking path. You have to. You know, that's what I do with music. It's just like, well, I'm just gonna do it myself. It's all DIY. You know, do it yourself. And if something you love enough, you do it long enough, maybe you'll get pretty good at it. Maybe something will come of it, you know. Growing up skating, you learn several things, but one of the things you learn is to be tenacious. Is if you fall down, you get up and you try again. You fall down, you try again. How many times have you tried the same trick? A hundred times until you've made it, right? That resonates into life with no matter what you do or what you try, you know. You just keep trying until you do it. That's what's been ingrained in you from skateboarding. Anything that you do in life is like an approach to skating. You know, playing music with people. You know, I do a lot of improvising. You never know what's coming next. You don't know if that car is coming, it's going to hit you, or that bus, taxi cab, etc. That person's going to walk right in front of you. You just have to be extremely aware at every moment. So it's the same thing with music. You just figure it out right then. Like, oh. Just unplug this and this, this, plug this back in, cool, I'm good to go. And you're communicating with the other guys right at that moment. It's like a session, you know, things get heated, people get stoked, they're like, fuck yeah. It's the same kind of feeling, you know, when you're with your friends and you're doing something that you really love to do and you're in the moment of doing it just for the sake of doing it, not for the, any other fucking reason. How many killer sessions have you had with just a handful of friends, you know, somewhere and there's no cameras, there's no fucking people watching, there's nothing. Those are the best times. you know, I just do what I love to do, but also to travel, to communicate with people without language, to try to express myself through the music, you know, and like to reach fucking people and go, hey, and hopefully just something positive, hopefully, you know, um, they have a positive response to it. Gigs over, man. Sorry, gigs <laughs> broke a fucking string.